What's up everyone, Thrall's Metal here once again. I'm Necrocknick and I have yet another collection update for you. Been hunting around the record stores, ordering stuff. I hit up uh, Hell's Headbangers Distro once again just because there was stuff in there that I missed the last time that I wanted. Got a good mix of new and old here. Uh, some more underground stuff, some definitely more well-known stuff. And uh, yeah, just a solid batch here and we're gonna go right through it. Atheist unquestionable presence. Imagine there's a fair amount of people that know this one. This was Atheist's second album, last one to feature Robert Patterson, who unfortunately died in a car wreck. This is some brilliant, uh, I guess, progressive death metal. I don't know, it's almost just sort of jazz fusion with growl vocals. It's kind of all over the place, but I love it. This is an incredible album, and I'm surprised I actually didn't own it, but I think I had it confused because I have this live at Vakken, which was Oh, so many years ago it's a two disc set and yeah I uh, noticed that I don't actually have the CD so I corrected that. Now this is the 2005 remaster on Relapse and it sounds absolutely brilliant. Great production. The music is again insane. Top tier musicianship across the board on here. Kelly Schaefer's vocals are just absolutely insane sounding in spots. I love this album. You can definitely hear how it influenced a lot of technical death metal in the future. Absolutely brilliant. Really don't need to say much about this, but if you have never checked out Atheist in general, I would say, definitely check this one out and check out all the other stuff too. Awesome stuff. Blood, Christbait. This is their second album. Originally came out in 1992. This is the 2015 reissue on Vic Records. This is a German death grind band that actually I had the pleasure of seeing at Maryland Death Fest 2019 on the uh, Ramstead stage and they absolutely blew me away. They were ridiculously over-the-top, fast, frantic death grind. Lots of old napalm death and like early bolt thrower vibes on this. Real sludgy guitars, the vocals are real low and nasty. Songs, of course, are short. There are 20 tracks on here and this is pretty much like a 45 minute album. So yeah, short and hostile grindcore, death grind, whatever you want to call it. I know, I absolutely dig it. I like the fact that there is a lot of groove on this album. Like, it will go into nice little groovy pockets before doing like punk and grindcore freakouts, and it's very riffy. Like, it has a lot of memorable riffs on here. This is the first album I've ever picked up by this band, and I know they have quite a few, so I'm definitely on the hunt for more. But I saw this on the rack at a local record store, and I was like, yeah, no, it's finally time to actually start getting some blood albums, and this is where I'm starting, and this is kind of a bit of a theme in terms of, well, at least the next one, too. But yeah, uh, I definitely need to get some more blood because this was a lot of fun. But yeah, if you have never jammed these guys and you love grindcore and death metal and, well, death grind, definitely check this out. Awesome stuff. It's gritty as hell, and like I said, if you're a grind freak like me, you'll probably dig it. Carpathian Forest, Strange Old Brew. This is their second album, came out in 2000. And uh, this is actually the first time that I've picked up a Carpathian Forest album. I've been kind of wondering where to start with these guys just because I really haven't jammed very much of them and I know they're very well known. So I picked this one up and was like, well, all right, let's just start here. And I gotta say, this is kind of a strange one to start with. This album is kind of all over the place. Now you get straightforward, very thrashy black metal on here. Uh, the production's okay it's got a bit of a plunky snare which i really didn't care for but the thrashy black metal is not necessarily what you hear on every track in here this is very odd i would say it's kind of an experimental album it has doom sections it has i don't even know what to call some of this like maybe progressive or just like avant-garde there's a sax solo on house of the whipcord and I don't know, it's it's just odd. It kind of takes away from the grim, cold energy. And sax solos seem to be popping up everywhere now, though this was 20 years ago, which man, 20 years ago was 2000, Jesus Christ. Anyway, this is maybe not the best place for me to start, but there are some songs in here I really do like. Uh, Mask of the Slave, I think is killer. And you know, it's got that fun, like, Dark Throne, D-beat sort of drive to some of this stuff. But the other tracks, I don't know, man. Some of these tracks are just, again, a little too all over the place, not really centered on one sound. So 
Again, this might not have been the best place for me to start, but I still liked a good chunk of this, and I will still check out more by Carpathian Forest. So if you like strange black metal albums with a lot of different elements and a saxophone, definitely check this out. I'm curious about the other ones. I am going to check out some more in the future, but uh, this one is possibly the wrong one to start with, but I still enjoyed a good chunk of it. So yeah, check it out. Felgrave, A Waning Light. This is the debut album from this Norwegian Death Doom Act. This is a one-man band, and I would almost say this is kind of closer to Funeral Doom, but with, like, black metal elements. The vocals are almost all in sort of that more raspy, maybe black metal or melodic death metal kind of mid-range. You don't really get, like, the low, well, really death metal growls on here. And fiercely atmospheric. Now, this is only five tracks long, and these songs are long. I want to say this was close to 50 minutes, and generally I don't have a problem with long songs as long as they go somewhere, and some of these songs kind of meander about. This is the first offering from this guy, so, you know, I'm going to give him a little bit of slack because, you know, first offerings, you want to try to make an impression. Sometimes you do a little bit too much. That is maybe some of the case on here. The second track on here though, I think shows probably the most promise, The Borrower. I think that is a really killer song in here. It's well constructed. It combines all the best elements that I liked in here, the atmosphere, the riffs, and that one has like a bit more focused songwriting and isn't so all over the place. I kind of just picked this one up on a whim. I knew it was on personal records and I just picked up Worf Lurch's second demo on there. I was like, well, why not? Let's see what else this label has to offer and this is still good though again this is still kind of rough around the edges but i would definitely check out more by this so if you like uh kind of blackened death doom definitely check this out it's pretty solid front antichrist militia this is the most recent offering from this finnish black metal black and death thrash it is kind of a blend of all three but it really does bring up the best aspects of all three, honestly. I really dig the overall sound. I like the nasty attitude. In fact, the song Iron Front starts off with the uh, dude hawking a loogie. That lets me know exactly how he feels. Loads of riffs, very guitar forward sound on here. The vocals are a little bit kind of in the back. I would have liked them a little bit more out front, but overall I like the energy on here. Riff driven all energy, lots of D beats, just stompy as hell. I mean, if you love Slayer riffs, you're gonna get a ton of Slayer riffs on here mixed with black metal. And the last song, Machine Gun Blasphemy, definitely has a ton of machine guns on it. So, I mean, appropriate atmosphere, I think. Pretty fun release. It's a short EP, but it is pissed off all the way through. There is no waning energy at all. I just like the fact that it is fast, pissed off, in your face, and does not pull any punches. So yeah, if you like any of those aspects in your black metal, death metal, or thrash metal, or your blackened death thrash, whatever the hell you want to call it, definitely check this out. It's a solid one. Hanging Fortress, Darkness Devours. This is the debut album from this Toledo, Ohio based death metal act. I'm reasonably sure I've actually seen these guys before at local shows too. This came out in 2020 on Redefining Darkness, and this is very much in that same vein as bands like Gay Creeper, Frozen Soul, Terminal Nation, groove-laden death metal with loads of hardcore elements, loads of big riffs, big growl vocals, lots of groove, I mean a ton of it. Every song on here is pretty much a mosher. I dig this, but it is kind of missing something else that I think those other bands do a little bit better is a little bit more melody. The main riffs they have on here are very hooky, but they kind of need a little bit extra on there. Like just like a little bit of a melodic hook or like a lead melody or a harmony or something like that. This is a little dry. And because of that, it doesn't distinguish itself very much from all the other bands that are doing this style. Now, I think this is a damn good start and I strongly recommend checking it out, but it kind of leaves a little bit to be desired, but this is a young band. This is their first release. They're definitely going to come out with more. I'm glad that a Toledo band is getting signed and, you know, doing well on a pretty awesome underground label. So that is pretty damn cool. So yeah, if you like any of those bands that I brought up, 
definitely check this out. It's mosh pit ready music, and well, mosh pits are gonna start coming back with all the shows that are coming back, and there might be a good chance you see these guys soon. So yeah, definitely check this out. Pretty solid stuff from my hometown. Possessed Death Metal Demo. This is the 2021 reissue on Vic Records of essentially all the early demos and live performances from Possessed. We love Possessed here and I saw this and I had to get it because I wanted to hear the early versions of stuff that would be on the legendary album Seven Churches and you definitely get all of that. These are nice and raw but they've definitely been remastered a little bit just so you get a little bit of extra clarity on there and it's just awesome hearing these original versions on here. You get some cool live tracks from 1987 so you get a little bit more of the later stuff past Seven Churches or at least you know uh, Eyes of Horror and Beyond the Gates and while the recording on those live tracks isn't the best it is really cool to actually hear those like it's a little window in time back to the Bay Area scene and absolutely awesome. You even get some bonus rehearsals from 1984. This was really cool to listen to and I'm a big fan of Possessed. I love all their albums and I saw this and I had to get it just because it's Possessed. Jet Becerra rules, Possessed rules. I'm hopefully going to get a chance to finally see them live. I was stoked to actually find this one. I wasn't sure if I was going to have to order it but yeah this is absolutely awesome. Again hopefully going to see them live sometime. But yeah, definitely check this out if you want to hear essentially the origins of an amazing, super influential band. Check it out. Fractal Universe, The Impassable Horizon. So the third album from this French progressive metal, progressive death metal band. I actually brought up their last release in a collection update uh, forever ago and they actually thanked me in the comments and that was one of the things that I remembered about them but I also remember them being really good and they still are. This is very much in the vein of bands like Gorod, uh, Gojira, Atheist, Cynic, lots of cool technical riffing, wild polyrhythmic drum patterns. The songwriting here is really good, though I think the fact that there is also a saxophone on here, this this whole saxophone thing in metal is <laughs> kind of taken off to the point where like, alright, am I just targeting the ones that have saxophones? unintentionally or are there just a lot of saxophones in uh, metal right now it's just kind of strange but they do employ it pretty well they kind of come in as like jazzy solos during clean moments in here which there are a lot of cool clean melodies you get a lot of cool vocal dynamics between like uh, I would say they kind of sound like they're auto-tuned vocals but they're harmonized and they kind of sound cool and robotic and yeah, it kind of lends itself to this music, but you also get some good harsh moments. There's some strip really good death metal moments on here. It's a little genty, but thankfully that's not all it is. There are tons of other cool songwriting dynamics on there, lots of cool jazz fusion moments. So at least it doesn't dry hump the, the gent riffs too damn much. And I gotta say, I like the classic prog harmonies that are on Godless Machinist, the second to last track. There's a bonus track in here that has, well, uh, an acoustic version of a song on the previous album, which I thought was a little odd, but it's, yeah, it's still pretty good. Pretty solid album. I dug this. I like all the cool proggy nuances on here, and it's pretty much on par with the last one. I still haven't checked out their first one, which I probably will end up looking for, but yeah, another solid release from these guys. So yeah, definitely check this out. Malakesh, The Ziggurat Scrolls EP. This is the first EP that Melikash released. This is the 2021 reissue on Vic Records. Vic Records has been doing a lot of reissues here. This is essentially demos, remixes, and they throw in some bonus tracks on this version. And this is kind of one of those like collectors only ones. Granted, you get some cool like demos from earlier albums, like even earlier than Sphinx. I can't think of the ones before that because Sphinx is the first one I got but you do get some ones off of Sphinx and you get a really cool Celtic Frost cover of Babylon Fell, which if you have the version of Sphinx that I do, that was a bonus track on there. Probably the biggest thing for me on here that wasn't something that appeared on another album, whether this was a demo or an actual master track, was the song of Magic and Reptilians. All instrumental, all Middle Eastern sounding. Now, if you know anything about this band, they started off in Jerusalem, now they're more of an international act, but the Middle Eastern theme is across the board on all their releases, and they do that stuff really well. That song is pretty much all atmospheric, it's all 
like done on an oud or at least with that sort of effect on the guitars. It's not heavy really at all, but it's really cool and that was the big standout here for me. But I dug it. I love Melakesh. I look forward to new releases and hopefully seeing them live one day too. But yeah, I would say this is more like a collector's only one and me being a collector and me being a fan of Melakesh, of course I was gonna get it. But yeah, it's still pretty cool. I still recommend checking it out. Hearing the old raw versions of the songs are pretty damn cool. So yeah, if you dig black metal, death metal, and thrash metal, and Middle Eastern music, or at least atmosphere, I know the music too. Definitely check this out. Melikash are a sick band. Killing Joke, Pylon. Now, I already have this album. It came out in 2015. I love it. I love pretty much most Killing Joke albums. This is the 2021 remaster of the album, and honestly, I didn't think I needed this, but once I started listening to it, I think I kind of did because I really, really enjoyed this remaster. They kind of cleaned it up a bit. It was a little bit muffled on the original mix. This is still just as gritty, but everything's a little bit clearer and a little bit louder. And I was already a huge fan of this album. I absolutely love this album. Like the last three, four Killing Joke albums have been incredible. And oh my God, New Jerusalem is up there with one of my favorite Killing Joke songs. The same thing with New Cold War. And this is a two disker too. So you get both discs that were in the special edition of the original version both of them remastered and same tracks so yeah but I mean the second disc has so many damn good songs Panopticon and Apothesis or Apotheosis whatever that word is I love it this is an absolutely amazing album I don't know if I call it metal but it's definitely heavy enough these guys are post-punk industrial sort of proto-industrial I don't know unless you listen to like really raw industrial metal or post-punk it's kind of hard to describe Killing Joke just know that they are heavy but in kind of a different way and if you love bands like ministry fear factory napalm death you'll definitely hear that influence but yeah this is an amazing album definitely check it out get the remaster get the old one too if you want something a little bit more raw but just get the album it's incredible check it out avici catharsis absolute this is the last album from this one man black metal band from phoenix arizona i actually covered one of their his albums in an underrated black metal segment like forever ago that might have been before we actually figured out lighting and sound either way this is a killer send-off i guess this was the final album i don't know what projects the one gentleman that runs avici does now but this was really good once again so i like all three of their albums now that i've heard all three this one Definitely labors more atmosphere. It has that old school Norwegian black metal sound, though they really have a gift for melody, or he has a gift for melody rather. Light Weaver in particular, very hooky, very cold, and I don't know, I guess I wouldn't call it like depressive, but it just feels dark and dreary, which I mean, that kind of works with black metal, like a lot. Now there's a little bit of pretense, the intro repercussion, eh, it kind of goes a little long, and then the last two tracks are, well, kind of different. The longest track also has like a very long intro on it, but it is a very long track, so you still get a lot of music. The last track, the title track, is probably the most interesting one on here because it is just a long, dreary piano sonnet. And I thought it was gonna be the intro to, you know, a bigger song, but it kind of just stayed with the piano, kept it all instrumental, no vocals, and while it's, you know, thoroughly depressive and, you know, sullen and dark, really didn't grab me as like a big closer on here. But still, I really enjoyed this album. Lightweaver is definitely a new favorite and voice of intuition. Oh my god, that song is absolutely killer too. If you've never jammed Avicii, check out all three of their albums. It sucks that they're done. I'd love to see him come back and make some more albums because I really enjoy all three of them. But I'm glad I got at least the three. So yeah. Definitely check these guys out if you need some really depressing, dark black metal in your life. And, well, if you're watching this channel, it might be a good chance you do. So check it out. Dimension Zero, Penetrations from a Lost World EP. This is the debut EP from this band, came out in 1997. And this was the side project of one Jesper Stromblad, X In Flames. This was his pure, thrashy, 
just very aggressive melodic death metal band on the side. And I think he got a lot of the extra aggression out in this band more so than In Flames. In Flames was still doing pretty well at that point, though, you know, the future would be meh. But this is the 2003 reissue of it, and this actually contains some extra tracks on here. You get some bonus live stuff and a really, really cool but unrecognizable cover of the Beatles' Helter Skelter. This is fast, raw, just aggressive as hell melodic death metal. So you get all those big mellow death hooks, but it keeps a very thrashy pace. You get a lot of blast beats on here. It's just ferocious and the live tracks sound great on here they did a really good job capturing the live feel definitely recommend checking out this band this is pretty much all the releases from them so i kind of picked this one up just because i wanted to round out the collection and solid stuff there's only a couple of tracks that actually appeared on their debut full length so this does stand on its own well and again if you like more aggressive melodic death metal like you know the haunted made me do it or that's a little bit more thrash yeah or Slaughter of the Soul, that sort of thing. Definitely check this out. Solid album. Fumes, Assemblage of Disgust. This is a 2021 compilation from this Canadian two-man death metal act. Actually, both members of this band are in a band that I brought up before in a collection update, the band Gut Void. Now this contains two of their EPs and one standalone single, and this is some really nasty, just ugly, but it was kind of different than I thought I was gonna get. Now, looking at this and jamming one of the tracks in here for a little bit just to know I liked it, it doesn't really take much for me to figure out I like a certain sound in death metal. I was surprised to actually hear more technical play, more dissonant riffing, and, you know, more atmosphere than I actually expected. Because, I mean, looking at this, it was like, all right, this is gonna be like kind of some caveman shit, and I do get some of that. But there's a lot more to this band, and I think that really keeps me interested in whatever they're doing in the future because the songwriting here is really good. It's more in-depth. There are really cool, like, technical elements on here. The songwriting is really good. The bass work on here is very prominent, and my God, this is heavy. All five tracks absolutely whooped ass. Not much of a change in the production. Like, you can kind of tell in the last couple of tracks that it's a little bit grittier, but it's not to the point where it's so vastly different than any of the other tracks. So it has like a really good flow. Like you could just listen to this straight through and be pummeled by every song. I love the deep gurgly vocals. The breakdown that is on Dream the Ichor is particularly good, but the nasty opening riff on Stagnant and Deteriorating. That I probably was the one that I jammed. My God, that is one of the heaviest things on this entire five track EP. Strongly recommend checking this out. I am definitely looking forward to hearing anything new from this band and Gut Void because Gut Void is also really good. But yeah, definitely check this out. This is some nasty underground, filthy death metal and you should definitely check it out. Funebrae, Children of the Scorn. This is the lone full length from this Finnish death metal band, came out in 1991, and since this is a lone full length, and it has a lot of underground appeal, I'm gonna keep this short because this will go on the list for retro reviews. This might've been one of the earliest Finnish death metal bands, and what I can tell you about this is it's awesome. It's a little bit different than some of the other Finnish death metal. I might be a little bit closer to that uh, pertinence. Know that it's awesome. Know that we're definitely gonna do a retro review of this at some point, and know that I already have some pretty good things to say about it. So yeah, keep an eye out for a review of this sometime in the future because I definitely wanna go over this one. Check it out though, and of course there will be a link to this and all the music down below so you can listen to it for yourself. But yeah, definitely check this one out. Speaking of Pertinence, we have Pertinence's Burial Incarnation. This is their most recent offering. Came out in 2020 on Extreme Music, and this is their fourth album overall. They reformed uh, quite some time ago, but they did break up after their first album. This is straightforward Finnish death metal. I love pretty much the old school vibe on this. Riff driven, loads of groove. My issue here is I don't think it's as good as the debut, just in terms of the fact that they seem like they're kind of calmed down and kind of more settled into like a nice little pocket. I liked how wild the initial debut was in terms of like the songwriting was a little unpredictable. 
This is a little bit more straightforward. It's still really good. I just kind of miss that aspect. It's kind of odd that I started with their first and then the next one I get is their last, but I am gonna get the other two. I just think this one's a little bit safe, but I still like it. I mean, I'm a sucker for riffs, I'm a sucker for grooves. The vocals are pretty solid on here, though I think they're a little bit one note, but the songs are good and I would definitely check out more of their stuff for damn sure. So yeah, if you like straight up old school Finnish death metal, definitely check this out. And finally we have Rapture, Malevolent Demise Incarnation. This is the third album from this Greek death thrash act and holy shit, this is badass. Now, I had actually ordered this, uh, I think on Amazon a while ago, probably right around the time it came out and it just arrived like a couple of days ago and I have been hooked on it. This reminds me of early Roadrunner stuff that I got into. Sepultura Beneath the Remains, Deicide, Legion, and stuff like Vader as well. Fiercely thrashy death metal, lots of awesome songwriting. The production is fiercely 90s as well. I love the absolute intensity of this album. Like this album takes very few breaks. This is a just straight pummeling from track to track. The vocal dynamics are absolutely killer in here. There's a nice kind of raspy thrash voice the frontman has, and then he could just drop it right down to the depths of hell with a nice death metal roar. The drum work is intense throughout. It doesn't seem to matter what speed that dude's going, because he's constantly doing cool stuff, but trust me, mostly what he's doing is very fast. And I love the riff work. This has that catchy, like, late 90s thrash, early 90s death metal sound, where they were kind of getting a little bit closer. There's melody in here, but it's sort of like aggressive melody. It's still like very punchy. Cool solos on here. This album is pretty much firing on all cylinders. And once again, death metal is just whooping my ass this year in terms of killer releases. And this one is creeping on that list. I really dig the shit out of this and I definitely want to check out more by this band. If any of their other releases are remotely close to this, I am probably already going to be a fan. But yeah, if you have not jammed this and you love thrash metal, death metal, that nice little heavy blend, either or actually, I think if you're a thrash fan, you'll find tons of stuff on here. And if you're a death metal fan, you'll probably love the shit out of it. Awesome stuff. Definitely check this band out. I am definitely on the hunt for more by them. So hopefully you see them in a collection update in the future. Check this out though. All right, well, that knocks out another one of these. Uh, gonna get back to trying to rank Cannibal Corpse albums. This is uh, such a pain in the ass. It sucks when you love pretty much every release. That really makes ranking a band's work particularly difficult. But plan to look forward to shows are coming back. I am hunting down tickets for all sorts of shows. So if you are in the Detroit or Cleveland area or in Toledo, Stop by, say hi. You know, we're gonna be at as many shows as we can possibly go to just because this last year and a half has been a giant bag of suck and well, it's time to go some shows. It's time to headbang some, some frustrations out and have a good time again. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time. We are also on Patreon. If you would like to help us out there, there will be a link below in the description for that. And we also have shirts available. If you would like one, please hit us up on thrallsofmetal at gmail.com. Make sure you put shirts in the subject matter and we will get back to you and sell you a shirt, hopefully. So with that, I thank you all for watching and we will catch you later.